Uh, hello? <laughs> What's going on? Welcome to Cineguac. Today I'm going to show you how to make these blacked out devil eyes in Adobe Premiere Pro. I've applied this effect several times in various different horror shorts I've made around the house. It's a lot easier than you think, so let's get started. Cineguac. So, here we are in Premiere. The first thing you want to do is drag your video clip to the timeline. So as you can see, we have this nice little video clip, which I shot on my iPhone, of Victoria and her back to us, and then she spins around, makes a scary face, and then completely breaks character. So let's just zoom in here, and let's just make some quick edits to this clip. So let's find the point where she breaks character. So she starts closing her mouth around there. So let's just trim that part out. And let's zoom back out, excellent. Now let's find the part of the clip where she first reveals her eyeballs. So that's around right here. And let's make a cut right there. So now we have our video clip separated into two pieces. Our first part where her eyes are not visible and another part where her eyes are visible. And we're gonna do most of our work obviously in the section of the video clip where her eyes are visible. So let's just zoom all the way in and let's move our playhead all the way to the very last frame. And with our video clip selected, let's go up here to Effects Controls window, and where it says Opacity, let's select this tool, the Free Draw tool. And let's just zoom in on our preview monitor so that we can see what we're doing a little bit better. And let's move this up so that her eyes are visible. And with this tool selected, let's just trace the exact shape of her eye. Excellent. Now let's increase right over here in opacity and then the mask that we just created where it says mask feather. Let's just increase this to let's say 20. You can always sort of play around with these values until it looks the way that you want but right now 20 looks pretty good. And once we've done that then let's hit the inverted button and that's going to invert our image so that everything else is visible except for the part that we just masked around, which in this case is her eyeball. And once we've done that, we can sort of make some micro adjustments here. Might help to zoom in even more. Obviously, the more precise you are, the better this is going to look. And once we are done with that, let's zoom back out here. And with our playhead still at the very last frame and our video layer selected, Let's go back to Opacity, Mask 1, and right here where it says Mask Path, let's hit this button, which is a Track Selected Mask Backward. And basically what that does is tracks the motion of her eye for our entire video clip. So now as you can see, when we play that back, her eye is completely blacked out and the mask follows the movement or motion of her eyeball. And we can get even more precise by just going to the very first couple of frames of our image. Let's just zoom in here. And if this image is at all off, then what you can do is just go back to our mask. And with the frame that you want to adjust, you can sort of just micro adjust it a little bit. That way it looks a little bit better. All right, I think that's a tiny improvement. So let's just watch that back, make sure it looks good. Beautiful. Next thing we want to do, let's just zoom out here. Let's select our video clip. And let's just unlink this from the audio so that we're just working with our video clip. And let's just copy this clip. And let's duplicate it directly above on video layer two. So I just hit command V or paste and let's snap this into place. So now we have two identical video clips, one right on top of the other. And with our top layer selected, let's delete the mask. So let's delete everything that we just did. Don't worry, we still have that effect on our layer beneath it. And next thing you wanna do is go to your effects library 
and let's search for the track matte key. You'll find that in the video effects keying subfolder and drag the track matte key to our original video layer on video layer one. And with that selected, let's go to effects controls, go down to our track matte settings and where it says matte, let's drop this little menu down and select video two. And what that does is basically just mats out all of the areas of our video two layer that isn't the eyeball. So now we have complete free reign with our new duplicate layer to redo the exact same opacity and tracking effects that we did for the first eye. So now what we want to do is go all the way back to the very last frame of our video layer. And just like we did for our first eye, let's repeat those exact same steps for her second eye. So let's just zoom in here so that we have a better look of what we're doing. And let's go back to opacity and select our free draw bezier tool. And let's just perfectly mask around the shape of her eye. And then don't forget to go over here and hit inverted. And we can just sort of make some micro adjustments. Again, the more precise you are, the better this is going to look in the end. So I advise you definitely take your time with this part. And once we are done, let's zoom back out, go to mask feather and change the value to 20. And once we've done that, you want to do the exact same thing we did last time with our playhead still on the very last frame and that video layer selected. Let's hit the track backwards. So now we are tracking the movement of her other eye. And when we play all of that back, my beautiful girlfriend is now super scary. And what we can do is go to the very first frame where our eye effects appear. Let's zoom all the way in. And let's first select our duplicate layer. And let's zoom in on the preview monitor so that we can see what this looks like close up. And you can sort of zoom in and just sort of take a look at the shape for the very first few frames of the effect. Sometimes the tracking doesn't work perfectly, so you might have to micro adjust it. And if that's the case, just select the layer that you want to adjust, hit the mask again, and you can just sort of micro adjust this so that it fits the eye perfectly, and it will automatically animate into place to the following frame. There we go. And so now when we play all of that back, that looks pretty good. Now we could end it there. This looks pretty good, but I think it would make it a lot scarier if we add a quick zoom in effect the moment that she turns around. So the way that we do that is let's first select all the clips on the timeline. Once we've done that, let's control click or just right click and hit nest. So what we're doing now is putting all of these clips into one video layer and one audio layer in a completely new sequence. And let's title this zoom and hit OK. And let's just zoom out again. Let's fit this preview monitor to the screen. And let's find the point of our clip where we want the zoom to happen. Maybe right here. And let's select our video layer. And right up here in effects controls, let's make a keyframe for scale. And let's just jump forward a couple frames. And let's increase this value to 115. And if we zoom in here, we can make this a little bit smoother by easing in and then easing out. So it's not too abrupt. It'll make it a little bit smoother. And when we play all of that through, we have a very nice zoom effect. Now I think it would be even scarier if we condense these a little bit, make these closer so that the zoom happens even faster. And let's play that through. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. And there you have it, blocked out eyes. <laughs>
And if you want to add some sound to it just to make your jump scare a little bit more effective, of course you can just record yourself on your phone making a scary monster noise. <laughs> and then import that sound effect into your project, drag that audio clip to the point of the video where you want it to happen, and then let's just copy and paste a couple different versions of that, line those up underneath, and let's change the speed by right-clicking, going to speed duration, and let's change one to 80, and let's change another one to 50, and when you play that back, you have a very scary monster noise. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful or just mildly entertaining. I spend a lot of time putting these videos together, so it would mean a lot if you hit that subscribe button or throw a couple likes at me because, you know, my happiness and self-worth relies on it.